So we're going to start looking at uh, Lewis electron dot formulas and all the wonderful things we can do with them involving covalent bonds. And so here you see the you know, valence electron dot formulas for our representative elements. And again, we can label these groups 1a, 2a, 3a, all the way over to 8 a, and we kind of like that representation because the Roman numeral tells us how many valence electrons we have for the elements in those groups. And so in order to write Lewis electron dot formulas, you want to follow these rules. And you can follow along with those as we go with a couple examples. I'm sure you've noticed I've changed the typo. Haha, -ha. or did you? So here are a couple different molecules that we'd like to draw the Lewis electron dot formula for. I'll put up my uh, rules there next to us. So the first thing I want to do is calculate the total number of valence electrons. So SCl2, I'm going to get 6 from sulfur, and I'm going to get 7 from each chlorine, so that's 14. So that's a total of 20 valence electrons for that one. If I look at COCl2, 4 from carbon, 6 from oxygen, and 7 and 7, so we should end up with 24 valence electrons here. And while we're doing that, for the BF4-1, I've got 7 from each fluorine, so that's 28. I've got 3 from boron, so that's 31. And then I add in the negative 1. So I will have 32 valence electrons there. So I'll just stay in this view mode for the first one, SCL2. So I calculated the valence electrons. Next, I want to draw the skeleton structure. The central atom is typically the least electronegative atom. So looking at my uh, electronegativities between sulfur and chlorine, and you can look on whatever chart, but essentially, usually sulfur is about 2.6, chlorine is 3.2, so sulfur is the least electronegative. So I'm going to put that in the middle, and I'm going to attach it with single bonds to the two chlorines. All right, now I want to distribute the electrons to the atoms surrounding the central atom or atoms, but we only have one here, to satisfy the octet rule. So chlorine here, there's two electrons in that shared bond, so it needs six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Same for the other chlorine. And now each chlorine believes it has eight valence electrons, so the octet rule is satisfied. So how many electrons does that take care of? Well, there's 2, 4, 6 around the, each chlorine, so that's 12 that are around the chlorines in lone pairs, and then 4 that are involved in the two single bonds. So that's 16 total. I'm supposed to have 20. So now rule 4 says distribute the remaining electrons as pairs to the central atom. And I can do that by just putting two lone pairs on sulfur, the 20 valence electrons are accounted for, and that is a nice Lewis electron dot formula. And here you see a little bigger, back to full page display. So looking at the COCl2, okay, the least electronegative is carbon. Carbon loves to be in the center. Anytime you have carbon, loves to be in the center of the molecule. So here I have carbon, and I want to attach an oxygen and two chlorines. So I'm just going to randomly pick to put them there. And so now what I want to do is, again, satisfy the octet rule and distribute the electrons. So for oxygen and each of the chlorines, I'm going to put three lone pairs. since now each atom believes it has eight because of the shared electrons in the bond. So how many electrons has that taken care of so far? 
Oh, I've got six on the oxygen, six on the chlorine, so that's 18 plus six in the bonds, two, four, six. That's 24. All right. It looks like we've taken care of the valence electrons, but look at carbon in the center. Carbon only has two, four, six electrons around it. That is not obeying the octet rule. And so what we have to do, as rule number four says, if there are fewer than eight electrons on a central atom, this suggests a double or triple bond. So we are two electrons short on carbon, so that suggests a double bond. If it was four electrons short, that would be a triple bond. So what I do, okay, oxygen is the only really viable choice for doing a double bond. So I get rid of a lone pair and make a double bond there. And so now that is a much more reasonable Lewis electron structure. Chlorine will not form a double bond, at least right now under these circumstances. So pause the video and take a second and see if you can do the BF4 negative 1, and I'll show you the answer. So here we see boron in the center with four covalent bonds around it, so its octet rule is B. Um, satisfied. Same with the four fluorines around it, but since this is a polyatomic ion, I put it in brackets and include the charge on the outside. All 32 valence electrons are accounted for, and that is my Lewis structure for this polyatomic ion. All right. So of course, there's going to be exceptions to the octet rule. And some molecules have an atom in this that has fewer than eight valence electrons. Pretty common with group 2A, especially beryllium, and group 3A, boron. Those are such teeny tiny little atoms that they're, some people like to say they're almost too small to have a full octet. Aluminum will also participate in this a little bit. But when we see barium and two fluorines, all right, barium ends up in the center with the fluorines around it. If I did my valence electron count, there's seven for each fluorine, that's 14, plus beryllium is two, so that should be 16 valence electrons. There's six around each fluorine, that's 12, plus the four in the covalent bonds, that's 16. Beryllium's happy that way, that's a good structure. Over here, okay, Boron and three fluorines. Three fluorines is 21 valence electrons, plus the three from boron, so that makes 24. And I end up having boron singly bonded to the three fluorines. They each have three lone pairs. And all the valence electrons are accounted for. And that is through significant, you know, we have data that backs up the fact that that is indeed the structure of boron and three fluorines, boron trifluoride. Now, aluminum chloride, that's a little fun. Um, as your book explains, at room temperature, aluminum chloride is an ionic solid. And it has a melting point of 190 degrees Celsius. That's not too high for an ionic compound. So when it, what ends up happening is you heat it up and it turns into a liquid. But what it does is it turns into a liquid of Al2Cl6. Okay, and let me show you that structure. So it liquefies into this Al2Cl6 structure. And as you heat it up, it vaporizes as Al2Cl6 molecules. Now, the octet rule is totally obeyed in that large molecule. Everyone has eight valence electrons. But what ends up happening is if you heat up the vapor even more, that will break apart into AlCl3 molecules. And when that happens, then the aluminum does not, no longer obeys the octet rule. So again, fun with exceptions, and we can go into more detail with that later, but those molecules have an atom with fewer than eight valence electrons. 
some molecules have an atom with more than eight valence electrons, and this is fairly common. From period three on, we have lots of extra orbitals around, um, especially the d orbitals, and there's that debate about what the true hybridization is, but the fact remains that we see a lot of these compounds that have exceptions where we see more than eight valence electrons. Like here we have phosphorus and five fluorines. Five fluorines is 35 valence electrons plus the five from phosphorus, that's 30 valence electrons. And so I end up having phosphorus in the middle with five fluorines around it. Each of the fluorines have the three lone pairs so that's 30 electrons I'm sorry yeah hold on haha -ha, I magically changed 40 valence electrons that's how many are in PF5 7 times 5 is 35 plus 5 is 40 so yes there's 30 valence electrons as lone pairs around the fluorines and then there's 10 more electrons in the bonds which makes 40 and phosphorus has 10 valence electrons around it but it's okay with that and here is what Rene McCormick was talking about that jerk who found out that xenon can actually form a compound so here we see xenon and four fluorines four fluorines is 28 plus 8 makes 36 I think I did the math right this time and so xenon is in the center with four fluorines, each fluorine having the three lone pairs. And so that makes 24 electrons in the lone pairs around fluorine, two, four, six, eight electrons in the bonds around xenon, 24 and eight only makes 32 electrons in this model. So what we have to go do is adjust this by adding lone pairs around xenon or making double or triple bonds. Well, we know that the, even though we can get these noble gases to form bonds, they're only going to form single bonds. So I go back and I add lone pairs on the xenon. So there's two lone pairs on xenon and xenon's okay with that it has 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 electrons around it and it's going to be just fine so I'm going to stop the video here and do the next topics on a separate video alrighty see you in a bit